How many of you have a hallelujah stirring on the inside of you right now? Yes. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than my unbelief. I raise a hallelujah for my weapon is a melody. I raise a This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is
today it was on my heart to just share some truths about faith. I want you to just say out loud some truths about faith. How many of you know how important faith is in your life? For we walk by faith, not by sight. The Christian's lifestyle is a lifestyle of faith. You don't always see what you're believing for, but as you see it, you see it with the eyes of faith. Can you say amen? And God does it. But there are some things that hinder our faith. And so I just want to do a combination of a few things this morning and maybe answer a few questions that some of you might have had. Let's start in Hebrews chapter 11, begin at verse 1. We're going to read verse 1 and verse 6, verses 1 and 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. How many of you are hoping for something? Now notice, the evidence of things not seen. I want to make this point. If you already see it, if you already feel it, you don't need faith for it. You need faith for what you can't see and you don't feel and it doesn't look in the natural like it's even working. But just like you plant a seed in the ground and a germination process is going on, that's how faith is. You plant the seed of faith in soil, in the soil of faith, and the next thing you know, a germination process is going on. And even though you can't see it, it is working on your behalf. Come on and tell somebody, I believe that. I love teaching on faith. It's like throwing a rabbit in a briar patch. I really enjoy that because there's something about it. Faith works in the simple things of life and the most important. Let me just tell you a little story that happened just today. Do y'all like stories? Okay, I'm out with Buddy this morning at 6.45, my little dog. I go get him. He's, he's not a morning person any more than I am, so he's a little sleepy when I get him. But I go and, come on, buddy, let's go for a walk. And he jumps in the car and goes right with me. So today, we've been walking, I don't know, 20-some minutes. And all of a sudden, I look down the trail. You know, I'm out on a, on a uh, wooded, wooded trail, and it's all grass trails. There's no asphalt. I just don't like asphalt and concrete trails. I like being out in the woods. Found out I actually enjoyed it. I don't even look forward to being done. By the way, some folks in here need some air. <laughs> but I'm out here. I'm on this trail, and I look way down the trail, and here comes three big dogs. Two of them are on leashes, and one is not. Well, Buddy, you know, about half of the people there do leashes and half don't. I know you're supposed to, but most don't, so or a lot of folks don't. Anyhow, Buddy's not on a leash. Let me just tell you about Buddy. He's the most perfect little dog that God ever created. <laughs> Even when he goes to potty, he goes off in the woods. He's private. He's the best little dog, so he didn't hurt anything being loose. Anyhow, so we're walking along, and here are these three dogs well, one of them doesn't have on a leash, so he comes bounding towards Buddy. Well, this thing is a Rottweiler. Now, it's a friendly Rottweiler and a beautiful dog, but Buddy doesn't think so. And by the time I see Buddy, all I see is his rear end going around the corner with his tail tucked between his legs, and he's gone. Well, I knew there wasn't any reason for me to go back that way because there's several trails he could have taken, and I wouldn't know where to look for him. So I'm going along, and I, you know, most of the time he'll catch up with me, and I hear his little click on his, on his uh, um, you know, collar, and he's coming along. I hear a little bell like it's not a bell, but it's kind of his tag, and you can hear it jump in. Well, he never, it never came, never came. So I'm thinking, what in the world am I going to do? I've, I literally have a lump in my throat. Silly as that may sound, I just love that little dog, that crazy little dog that the Lord gave me. <laughs> and so anyhow, nobody. And then I'm thinking, well, maybe he'll go back to the car because he knew the trail that we came on to get where we were. Maybe he'll run back and just do reverse thing. Well, actually, that's what he did. But the problem was the people that frightened him to start with came out, and I told them his name because they said, we'll be looking for him. But anyhow, they, I told them his name. And uh, so anyhow, they're out there, and when they call Buddy and he sees those big dogs, he takes off again. 
And he goes in behind this uh, gated community, and there's no, there's no getting him. And uh, these people called him, and, and he ran even further. So I, at this point, I don't know what to do. I can't leave and leave my little dog. I even thought about, I'm going to have to call somebody to go preach this morning. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not leaving, buddy. i got to find him. So anyhow, the guy says, well, he ran in here, and so this, since this community is like this, I'll stay here at the gate. So I go a mile and a half around to go in. I, I happen to have a um, um, thing that'll work, you know, my little clicker thing, so it worked, and I go in there, and I drive back, and all of a sudden, I see him way off in the distance, running up and down in the back, but he can't find his way out because he's behind fences that are fenced in. So he hears my voice, and he goes running back and forth, back and forth. While I lose him part of the time, I find him, but he, we can't get together. And so you're going to think how silly this is, but I bow my head. I said, Lord, you gave me that little dog. Let us connect up again somehow. And so help me to God. He comes around the corner of the back of a house and starts right down the middle of the road. And he sees me and hears me. And you ought to have seen the connection. And when I got home, Bill will tell you, he would not leave my side. He's right with me every minute. Well, it's the little things too. It's not just the big things. Wife, God, wives, God cares about your kitchen. He cares about your refrigerator. He cares about your washer and dryers. He cares about your children and their behavior. He cares about everything that concerns you. And, and men, God cares about your things. He cares about you. He cares about what's important to you. Everything about the Christian life from the smallest thing to the biggest thing has to happen by faith. And Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But here's the thing that we've got to go on further and look at, verse 6. But without faith, how many of you know what it is to be without faith? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God, now notice, the very first and most important thing to God, believe that he is. Tell somebody. Believe that God is. You see, you say, well, Pastor Reggie, I believe God is. I just having trouble with some of the other things. But I believe God is. That is faith that you believe God is. It's a portion of faith. It's not all of it, but you first have got to believe that God is. And secondly, I want you to know you need to believe something else is found in Ephesians 3.20. You've got to believe that God is able. Amen. Not just that he is. Because he could exist and not get involved in your life. But you have to believe that he's able. What's he able to do? Exceeding abundantly above anything that we could ask or think according to his power that's at work in us. So here we see you've got to believe that he is, but we also need something else. We need to believe that his power, as his power works in us, something supernatural begins to happen. Say it loud, thank God for the supernatural. Still, I ask this question, is that enough? Is that all we need? Are there other things that might be a part of our faith equation? You see, faith that God is is the first key, but it's not the only key. Faith that God is able is a key, but it's not the only key. Notice this. This is how we're saved, by faith. This is how we receive the Holy Spirit, by faith. Everything we're going to receive from the kingdom in the kingdom perspective is by faith. Hallelujah. That's why God says, there's things I want to do for you, but without faith, it's impossible to please me. And one reason is because if you don't have faith to see me do that, I can't be pleased because I don't get to do it for you. I tell you, God wants to do exceeding, abundantly, above what we could ask or 
think about you. Hallelujah. If, if you've got a physical ailment, he sees you whole. He wants you whole. It's just like a parent. We love our children. No parent that loves their children in this room wants to see their children sick. Not one of us want to see our children sick. Well, God loves you. He doesn't want to see you sick. He doesn't want to see you hurting. He wants to see you whole and healthy and blessed and walking up rightly before God. Hallelujah. He cares about you and he cares about everything that concerns you and your family. Say out loud, I truly believe that. <laughs> Notice this. And this is important. It was according to his power that's in work in us. He's able to do exceeding abundantly. See, faith. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or think. But then man put this in, but this, this part is true. According to the power, meaning the comma, according to the power that's at work in us. The next question I have for you is his power at work in you. But you shall receive power after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He doesn't want you just in one thing. He wants you to have power in your life. Can you say amen? Just lift your right hand and say, God wants me to have power. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, there's something about the supernatural power of God. Years ago, B and I were putting together some toys. We, we'd built this new room in the back, uh, the, an addition in the back of our house. We built a new room, put in a pool. This is years and years ago when the kids were small. And so we were in the back room. It, I believe it was 16 by 32. So it was a nice size room that we'd put in. We'd built it, had a toy box built and all this stuff. And we're back there putting all this stuff together. And B, being the kind of mom she is, she had a splitting migraine, but she kept right on going that the migraine's about to kill her. I mean, she's, you, you those who've had those know they can be dark. You can be, once you go somewhere and shut all the blinds and not see anything or hear anything. The people that have had migraines know how, how much torture can be connected. It's not like a normal headache. Yes, that gets on your nerves and they're annoying, but it's not like a migraine. I've never had one, but I've lived through B when she's, when she's dealt with those. So I'm standing there, and I had been particularly seeking the Lord extra specially during that time. I, I can't explain it to you, even, even that room. I'd go back there and walk back and forth in the middle of the night, and I'd pray, and I'd feel God stirring me for the future. And I, I, it, it hadn't formed in me yet. I didn't know exactly what it was, but I was just seeking Him especially, extra specially. I don't know if that's good grammar or not, but anyhow, extra And all of a sudden, in that moment, the word of the Lord came to me. How many of you know what that means? Yeah, you get impressions right along, and I thank God for those, and that's daily. We're led by the Spirit of God. We need to be. But this was beyond even that. That was just a word from the Lord came to me saying, have faith in the power. Have faith in the power. You see, sometimes we wonder, how's God going to do? We're believing him for, for uh, physical health, or we're believing him for something to happen, something to change. But if it happens, it's going to happen according to his power. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above what we can ask or even think, but it's according to his power. Say out loud, thank God for the power. You see, people wonder, what is it that faith actually does? It brings into pass the power of God. When we believe God for something, it brings his power on the scene. Hallelujah. You, you can believe God is and not really exercise faith beyond that, and it's good. You believe God is, that's faith, that's a portion of faith. But beyond that, you've got to believe God to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or think by the power that the faith that you have is going to bring into manifestation. He dealt with me to talk to you about this this morning, talk to you about this. Because some of you have been frustrated a little bit in some of your faith. Well, then here's the other people, they'll, they'll get a little frustrated in the faith life. Next thing you know, they just abandon it and say, well, that doesn't work. It does work. It absolutely works. 
You've just got to work it. Can you say amen? And you've got to power it. But you will receive power after that. Not before, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I can't tell you the times in a prayer line or the times that I've been ministering here in the church and even before I ever was a pastor, how the times of power of the Lord, I'd go to minister to somebody and the power of the Lord would come upon me. All of a sudden, I knew something beyond me that was initiated by my faith came to my rescue, hallelujah, beyond just ordinary faith. It, it's where it starts. Smith Wigglesworth used to say, when my faith, when I've gone as far as I can go with my faith, then a faith takes hold of me that cannot be denied. That's the power of God. And that he was a man who raised the dead. Thank God for that. I think we learned something from somebody God has used to raise the dead. He was called the apostle of faith. The assemblies of God in for a long, long time had in their um, gospel publishing house, they, they would sell that book called the apostle of faith, a wonderful book on the faith exploits of Smith Wigglesworth. Thank God for faith. Tell somebody you appreciate that. Tell that I appreciate faith. Tell them that. Tell, just speak over and tell them that. Tell them, say, let's get this. But the Lord broke that that night. And we've seen this over the years. God just do things for us. And you have as well. Thank God for that. I just think it's so important. We must understand it is according to his power, and what brings on the scene power is faith, faith in God. Jesus said, have faith in God. So that's where it starts, is faith in God. But faith in God brings his operation, his power, his direction. You know, a lot of people use their faith for a lot of things, and I've said this to you. I use my faith primarily to be led by the Spirit of God. When I don't know what to do, I don't know which way to turn, and I'm walking something out, and, and right now it isn't work, doesn't look like it's working, I just keep walking, I just keep talking, I just keep praying, I just keep moving, and when doubt tries to come and try to assail and, and, and steal my faith, I just keep standing. Having done all to stand, just stand there for. Some of you this morning, you have stood and you've stood and you're tired of standing. But be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. Come on and give him praise today in this house. How many of you believe this? You believe this. You live this. Tell me, I live this way. Now, all of us know what it is to embarrass our faith. What do you mean by that? How many of you know what it is to doubt and you, you pull back and then God does it in spite of you and then you're ashamed of yourself? I just had an experience like that recently. I'm going to share with you soon and you're going to rejoice with me. It's already happened. No, I'm not telling you today. Come back on the 14th, I'll tell you. I'll be here next week too, I think. But I'm not going to tell you next week. I'm going to tell you on the 14th. I'll tell you why on the 14th, why I waited until then. But anyhow, how many of you know God has things for you? Point to yourself. Say, God has some things for me. Customized. Hallelujah. He's got a way of customizing whatever you need to happen in your life. He's God. He's God. He's bigger than all our needs combined. And we believe that he is and that he's able. And it's according to his power. This brings me to the second truth today that I want to share with you. Again, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God, number one, and we just talked about that, must believe that he is. But number two, I want everybody to say number two, number two. That he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's so often that when we're praying and we're seeking God, and that's just one of the ways we seek God is through prayer. But how many times has the enemy suggested to you, you've got things you need to be doing that's more important than this? But nothing is more important than the time you spend with God. Nothing. Nothing is more important than that. Can you say amen? amen. 
You see, I, I don't get shouted down because so many Christians are living beneath their privileges in prayer. That's why we take one night of the week and we put an emphasis on prayer. Because if you want to live the faith life, you are going to have to live a prayer life. The two go together. Can you say amen? I don't mean you got to pray two or three hours a day, but you need to be a consistent prayer. Your prayer needs to be a part of your life. Hallelujah. In your seeking God, you walk with Him. You talk with Him. He talks with you. There's just a relationship between you and the Holy Spirit that brings Brings you into green pastures. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Notice he didn't say dead pastures. He didn't say worn out or bankrupt pastures. In lush green pastures. He is my shepherd. He leads me into green pastures. Come on and shout and give him praise. Now number two. He is. This what I, he's a rewarder. Of those who diligently seek him. Diligently means you do it when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. You know, it's easy to worship the Lord when everything's going great. But God loves it when things aren't going great. Not that it's not going great, but that you worship him anyhow. You walk with him anyhow. You put your trust in him anyhow. I can't see it. Uh, feel it or see it. Nothing looks like it's working, but bless God, I know in whom I am believed, and I'm fully persuaded that what he's promised, he's also able to perform. Come on and give him a shout and give him praise. My goodness, this is like throwing a rabbit in a briar patch. It's just alive in here. Hallelujah. You seek him through prayer. You seek him through worship. You seek him through praise. You see, the Bible says praise is comely for the upright. If you're an upright person, meaning you're right with God, praise is comely for you. You ought to go down through your house praising the Lord. You ought to ride down the road in your car praising the Lord. You ought to have a praise under your breath even when everybody's around you. Praise ye the Lord. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His excellent greatness. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. The lifestyle of faith is a praising thing. It's prayer, it's worship, and it's praise. Actually, prayer is worship. It's a part of it. And praise is a part of it. It includes that. And singing songs. How many of you know God wants you singing? Hallelujah. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Hallelujah. Point to yourself. Say, he's watching me. He cares about me. Come on, point to somebody. Say, he cares about you just as much as he does me. We're all special. You know, my grandkids, I'll tell them. It's just the two of us riding along. I'll say, you know, you're my favorite. One day I'm with Sean's kids, three of them. And I believe it was Lucy. I'm not positive, but Lucy. She said, Granddaddy, I told so-and-so, it was either Claire or Kate, that you said I was your favorite. <laughs> but you told them they were your favorite. <laughs> and I said, it's very simple. You're all my favorite. <laughs> right? Did you know that's how it is with God? We're all his favorite. You ought to feel like the favorite of God. He ought to make you so special. There's no sense between us. He loves us all the same. He cares about you. And if he tells you you're my favorite, he means that you're my favorite because he'll tell the next person the same thing and mean the same thing. Hallelujah. Favorites were all God's favorites. You say, Pastor Reggie, I don't feel today like God's favorite. It isn't based on how you feel. It isn't based on circumstances. It's based on his love for you. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not have to perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. I'm a part of that group. You're a part of that group. He loved and he still loves us. 
So say out loud, I'm a favorite of God. I'm favorite. Why don't you say I'm God's favorite? I'm favorite. That's a little strong, Pastor Reggie. You know, another way we seek the Lord is through study. Paul told Timothy, his son in the faith, he said, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So Bible study, time in the word, is a part of seeking God. All things that you do, even when you're doing good deeds out in the community, that's seeking God. God. There's nothing that you do God word that he doesn't see and he rewards you. This word reward means remunerates. He comes behind you. He sees your prayer time. He sees your worship time. He sees your praise time. He sees everything you do, every good deed that you do. And he comes along and he remunerates you. That's his way of causing things to come on you, to overtake you, to bless you. Hallelujah. Thank God. I'm telling you right now, don't don't you dare let the devil come tell you God doesn't care about you. I'm here today as a man of God to tell you he cares very much about you. He loves you whom God loves you as a father in whom his son he delights. This is not pie in the sky preaching. This is truth. Truth. The truth sets you free. How long have you sat home with a pity party? Because the enemy's telling you that this is not true. He's trying to tell you nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about what's happening to you. I'm telling you there's a whole lot more people care about you than you have any idea. I was having a pity party one time as a pastor. People had come against me years ago. I was walking through a dark place. My heart was broken. I was, I was just complaining to the Lord. You ever done that? I want to ask you, have you ever complained to the Lord? And the Lord said to me, there's far more with you than there are against you. Turn to somebody and say, there's far more for you than there are against you. You're always going to have a few people against you. But you don't stop because somebody's against you. You don't quit because somebody's mad at you. You just keep right on walking. If you can fix something, you fix it. But some things you just can't fix. You're not broken. Maybe they're broken. Amen? But there's some things you can't fix, but you can always walk right through the middle of it. They got ready to throw Jesus over the brow of a hill. He walked right through the middle of them. Hallelujah. He'll cocoon you. He'll sustain you. He'll fix you in your house. He'll watch over you with people. He will make a way for you where there seems to be no, oh, hallelujah. Come on and stand up and praise him. Come on and let's praise him in the house. Come on. I feel there's a wind in the house. I feel there's a wind in this house. Come on. I'm going to pick up here next week and tell you some things, why some things might, might not be working. But I'm telling you today how they do work. Hallelujah. Faith in God. Believing that he's able and then letting his power go to work in you. Hallelujah. Some people might have faith, but they've not used their faith enough to let his power come into manifestation. You say, if I'm believing God, what happens? His power does it. The Holy Spirit was brooding over the face of the earth. There wasn't one thing created. He's brooding over the face of the earth. And all of a sudden, God said, let there be light. And the Holy Spirit went to work with God's power. Oh, hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. Give him praise in the house. 